HBO's Game of Thrones prequel House of the Dragon has a killer cast, a new writer's room, and the approval of George R. R. Martin himself. But will that be enough to bring back the Game of Thrones fandom after the controversial Season 8 finale? Here's everything you need to know before you see House of the Dragon. On March 30th, HBO announced the most important piece of news about House of the Dragon on Twitter. The Game of Thrones prequel will release its first episode on Sunday, August 21st. Following its HBO debut, the episode will be available to stream on HBO Max. We can safely bet HBO will follow this release plan for each of the 10 episodes that comprise Season 1 of House of the Dragon. In February, George R. R. Martin announced on his blog that filming on House of the Dragon was finished. He wrote, I have seen rough cuts of a few of them. The writing, the directing, the acting all looked terrific. Martin then tipped his cap to co-showrunners Ryan Condal and Miguel Sapochnik, as well as the cast and crew for all of their hard work. Sapochnik told The Hollywood Reporter in October 2021 that, although they were standing on the shoulders of Game of Thrones and needed to maintain a respect for the original, the prequel has its own tone that will evolve and emerge over the course of the show. He continued, We'll be lucky if we ever come close to what the original show was, so we're just putting our heads down and getting on with it. Hopefully it will be seen as something else, but it will have to earn that. It won't happen overnight. Although specific concrete plot details about the series are still relatively sparse, we can infer some larger details from the novel it's based on. In George R. R. Martin's own words, Fire and Blood covers the seven Targaryen kings from Aegon I, aka Aegon the Conqueror, to the regency of Aegon III, aka Aegon the Dragonbane, along with many of the people they meet during that time. Warner Media's March 30th press release includes a simple logline for the prequel series' first season. Based on George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood, the series, set 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones, tells the story of House Targaryen. HBO Max released a teaser trailer for House of the Dragon in October 2021, revealing that the series will not take place 300 years before Game of Thrones as originally intended, but 200 years instead. The short teaser offers a quick glimpse of the Hand of the King, a shot of King Viserys Targaryen on the Iron Throne holding the sword known as Blackfire, Alicent Hightower moving worriedly through a crowd holding a dagger, and a couple of Targaryens standing on the beach. We also get a quick flash of Lord Corlys Velaryon looking pensively off into the distance, and we see his entire family making a grand entrance into some high-profile occasion. There are also shots of sword fights and a jousting tournament, and we see one of the Targaryen princesses walking slowly towards a much bigger and scarier Iron Throne. Matt Smith's Damon Targaryen is the only actor heard in the teaser, ending out the teaser with Dreams didn't make us kings. Dragons did. We don't get any dialogue between characters or other exposition, but the quick visuals show enough intense and beautifully shot moments to take viewers through season one, and hopefully beyond. The first official trailer for HBO's House of the Dragon delivers on the explosive cutthroat narrative behind the Targaryen legacy and deadly civil war. It opens with an older Rhaenyra overlooking the cliffs of Dragonstone. She's currently the ruling princess of the island, a location viewers will recognize as Daenerys' refuge in Game of Thrones Season 7. I was born at Dragonstone. Not that I can remember it. We also see Rhaenyra's gold dragon flying over King's Landing with the princess on her back. Viewers also find ancestors from House Stark and Baratheon pledging their loyalty to King Viserys in the throne room. After that, we're treated to a staggering, jagged, and book-accurate Iron Throne showcasing the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies that were supposedly melted down by dragon giant Balerion the Black Dread. The trailer appropriately ends in a roar of dragonfire frightening an awestruck Prince Daemon Targaryen, enticing audiences to return to Westeros in August. Lastly, a new official trailer that dropped on July 20th unveils even more of the series' premise. We see more of the unrest, with King Viserys choosing his daughter as his successor over his brother Daemon. Of course, these older times weren't as progressive as Daenerys and Cersei's, so we see that a lot of people of Westeros aren't too fond of having to kneel to a queen instead of a king. HBO officially released the first poster for House of the Dragon, promising a reign of dragonfire when the series premieres August 21st on HBO Max. The striking poster features a full look at the heir to the Iron Throne and dragon rider Rhaenyra Targaryen with her enormous dragon. Her Valerian features mirror Daenerys's, with whom she also shares a fierce destiny and a determination to rule Westeros. The poster also includes our first look at a freshly forged Iron Throne and Rhaenyra's royal red and black Targaryen gown. Meanwhile, the menacing dragon foreshadows the devastating Targaryen civil war, the Dance of Dragons, which the series centers on. One question is on the minds of loyal book readers. Will Balerion the Black Dread be one of the many dragons featured in the new prequel series? Fans of Game of Thrones will remember Balerion's giant dragon skull that Cersei Lannister destroys with her dragon-killing weapon. What they may not know is that the Black Dread was once ridden by King Viserys when he was a young prince. 
The enormous beast goes on to melt down the many swords of Aegon's enemies with his deadly dragon fire, and according to in-universe folklore, that's how Aegon I created the prized Iron Throne. According to the World of Ice and Fire, Balerion unfortunately died of old age in 94 AC. AC meaning after conquest, referring to Aegon I. The new series will begin around 129 AC when the Targaryen Civil War started. Therefore, it's unlikely we'll see Balerion in House of the Dragon at first, but we've seen possible flashbacks in the trailer, so it's possible the Black Dread may return in Viserys' memories. The author of the A Song of Ice and Fire series has given a seal of approval, and then some, by even citing some improvements to his original source material. The beloved author wrote on his blog, I've now watched rough cuts of nine of the ten episodes, and I continue to be impressed. I cannot speak to the special effects, many of which are not in yet, but the look of it is great, and the acting, the directing, and writing are first rate. As for the changes, he states, For all you book fans, it is my story. Sure, there are some changes from Fire and Blood, we could not present three alternative versions of every major event, not to keep our sanity, but I think Ryan Condal and his writers made good choices, even some improvements. Entertainment Weekly confirmed House of the Dragon would be filming in England instead of Northern Ireland like the original Game of Thrones series. However, the news that the prequel series would be filming in the notable Leavesden Studios in Watford was even more revealing. The production site is famous for other iconic Warner Brothers projects like the Harry Potter series and more recently, The Batman. House of the Dragon also returned to film at singular Game of Thrones locations in Spain. Watchers on the Wall shows the production crew returning to Cáceres and Trujillo, which both served as King's Landing locations for Thrones Season 7, and will again for the new series. Cáceres also served as Old Town, where Sam trained to become a maester, which House of the Dragon could also potentially return to. Additionally, Watchers reports the series filmed in Portugal and Cornwall, England, and the Cornwall shoots featured a few esteemed House of the Dragon cast members. Game of Thrones series composer Ramin Javadi is confirmed to return to Westeros and compose the score for the highly anticipated House of the Dragon. Javadi is responsible for many of the iconic soundscapes behind major characters, and of course, he also composed the Game of Thrones intro music. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to call it one of the most iconic TV theme songs of its era, and he will surely create a fiery new anthem for the prequel series. Elsewhere on HBO, Ramin Javadi's work can be heard on Westworld Season 4, where he puts his own unique twist on hits like Billie Eilish's Bad Guy and Metallica's Enter Sandman. One of the main reasons this particular show was produced instead of any of the other Game of Thrones spin-offs in development is because of the solid foundation laid out by George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood. The sprawling prequel novel chronicles the Targaryen dynasty from Aegon I the Conqueror to the Dance of Dragons Civil War that ripped the royal family apart by fire, blood, tooth, and claw. Martin's book is the blueprint for HBO's newest Dragon Pack series, and could serve as a worthy successor to the original groundbreaking show. The House of the Dragon is also similar in concept to Brian Cogman's rejected spin-off series that HBO chose not to produce. Cogman wrote the Game of Thrones series Bible, and was often referred to as the Keeper of the Mythos on set. He ended up writing 11 episodes over the series' run, including standouts like Kissed by Fire, What is Dead May Never Die, and A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. After a poorly received final season of Game of Thrones, even the most hardcore fans are cautious to return to Westeros. According to its many detractors, Season 8 rushes character arcs of the series' most important characters and doubled down on spectacle instead of substance. Creators David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, who adapted the HBO hit from George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series, found themselves met with massive backlash. Fans were so outraged by the final season that a petition was formed to remake it entirely, which has since amassed nearly 2 million signatures. The season was so rejected by fans that Martin himself felt compelled to comment and cited the toxicity he felt from negative fans. I don't understand how people can come to hate so much something that they once loved. How has everything become so toxic? Martin has also recently promised his ending will be quite different than the show's, and is even a credited co-creator and executive producer on House of the Dragon. With the author himself seemingly more involved in this new series, fans have a good reason to be optimistic. While D.B. Weiss and David Benioff are creating new content at Netflix, Emmy-winning director Miguel Shapochnik is returning to Westeros on a full-time basis. Shapochnik famously directed the jaw-dropping brutality of Game of Thrones Season 6's The Battle of the Bastards, as well as Season 8's feature film-length episode The Long Night, which showcases the surviving heroes battling against the undead White Walkers. For House of the Dragon, Shapochnik will direct multiple episodes as well as act as co-creator and executive producer. Co-creator Ryan Condal serves as writer with George R. R. Martin, who is returning to write for the first time since Season 4 of Thrones, alongside a new crew of promising writers. This fresh writer's room would seem to ensure that House of the Dragon will indeed have a different tone from the original series. The Targaryen sigil has three heads, the House of the Dragon has three main dragon riders. 
King Viserys, Rhaenyra, and Daemon all climb the respective backs of their dragons and rain fire down upon their enemies. Though Viserys never takes flight on another dragon after the death of Balerion, Rhaenyra and Daemon will provide plenty of fiery sky scenes in the upcoming prequel. Daemon's dragon Caraxes is something of a different beast from the aforementioned other two flying fire lizards. Nicknamed the Bloodworm, Caraxes was first tamed by Aemon Targaryen I. The Red Dragon is described in the books as the fiercest of all the young dragons in the Dragon Pit, and fearsome and no stranger to blood and fire. With Caraxes at Daemon's disposal and when the Dance of Dragons begins, we can certainly anticipate an onslaught for anyone who gets in his way, including his niece, the pure Valerian Rhaenyra. As the saying goes, They say every time a Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin and the world holds its breath. In the book, The Dance of Dragons is a brutal civil war that viciously pits family against family and dragon against dragon for the Iron Throne. The war nearly wipes out the entire Targaryen family, leaving only a handful alive by the time of the events depicted in Game of Thrones. After King Viserys dies, the kingdom is divided on future ruleship, with everyone plotting their own secret scheme and playing a conniving Game of Thrones. And as we all know… When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. Viserys names Rhaenyra his heir, but as the trailer states, Men would sooner put the realm to the torch and see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. Before there was the House of the Dragon, HBO competently planned to move thousands and thousands of years away from the world of Westeros as we knew it. The origin prequel, dubbed with many nicknames like the Long Night and the seemingly official Blood Moon, would explore the roots of the sinister zombie-like beings, the White Walkers. It was also intended to dive into the magical lore of the Children of the Forest who helped Bran in Season 4 of Game of Thrones. This first attempt at a prequel series, reportedly titled Blood Moon, was set to star Naomi Watts, and the pilot was written by Jane Goldman. It was unfortunately canceled after HBO spent a reported $30 million on the first episode, when former Warner Media Entertainment chairman Bob Greenblatt viewed the episode. In Greenblatt's account, When I saw a cut of the pilot a few months after I arrived, I said to HBO boss Casey Bloys, This just doesn't work, and I don't think it delivers on the promise of the original series. And he didn't disagree, which actually was a relief. Recently, The Hollywood Reporter broke the news that a Jon Snow spinoff is in development at HBO with Kit Harington reprising his role. This brings a grand total of other Thrones spinoffs currently in development, excluding House of the Dragon, to eight possible new series. According to Deadline, there are three live-action series being explored, including 10,000 Ships, Nine Voyages aka Sea Snakes, and Flea Bottom. Additionally, a Dunkin' Egg prequel series was announced. Hopefully, these will have better fates than Blood Moon and they'll follow House of the Dragon to HBO. Three animated series have also been announced, though George R. R. Martin gives words of caution to fans anticipating all the spin-offs making it to air. The television writer is no stranger to unaired pilots, and though his lips are sealed tight, he gives several tidbits and other possible titles on his blog. With eight potential spin-offs in various stages of development, it's safe to say we won't have to worry about leaving Westeros anytime soon. While we won't see any Game of Thrones characters alive in House of the Dragon, they'll certainly be there in spirit. There are already striking parallels between Dragonstone residents Rhaenyra and Daenerys from their shared Valerian features to their fiery determination and resilience. The envious and entitled Daemon eerily embodies Viserys III's vile spirit, and his silver blonde hair is reminiscent of the pompous prince. The sea snake Lord Corlys Velaryon and his wife Princess Rhaenys Targaryen will also conjure memories of similar characters like Euron Greyjoy and Cersei Lannister. The sea snake commands the largest naval army in Westeros, while the Targaryen princess was also denied the Iron Throne because of her gender. Rhaenys is a dragon rider who is surely angry about being dubbed the Queen Who Never Was. She'll command her dragon in the Dance of Dragons, while the Sea Snake's origins will also be further explored. Fans can also look forward to returning to familiar locations like King's Landing, Hall, Dragonstone, and possibly Old Town and Dorne, if the novel Fire and Blood is any indication of what's to come. Game of Thrones fans will remember the harrowing adventure Sir Jorah Mormont and Tyrion Lannister took through the ruins of Valeria in Season 5 of Game of Thrones. This mysterious location may have a significant influence on the House of the Dragon due to its deep connection with the history of the Targaryens. The prophesied disaster is the reason for the Targaryens' initial landing on Dragonstone and their alliance with House Velaryon. A city of a thousand years, and all that men had learned. The doom consumed it all alike. Though not much is known about the catastrophic event, we know many of the great city of Valeria's precious secrets, like magic, were forever lost in the doom. The devastating eruption consequently sent Essos into chaos and gave the Dothraki an opportunity to claim an abundance of land surrounding the Dothraki Sea. 
The ruinous event was so powerful it even killed dragons, and is the reason why there are so few left in Westeros. Could the House of the Dragon eventually revisit this critical point in Westeros history? Only time will tell. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.